let's do a quick uh, recap of what we've been talking about for a while. Um, so what we've talked about is uh, lasers and the fact that uh, they have modes. Okay? So lasers have modes and so these could be longitudinal or they could be transverse. Okay, I'm doing a quick recap. Uh, the longitudinal waves are also called, uh, uh, longitudinal modes are also called frequency. modes, right, and these are also called temporal modes or temporal frequency modes. The transverse modes are called spatial modes and uh, so we haven't talked about uh, the spatial modes and we will talk about that later, okay. So, mm, haven't discussed spatial laser modes will do so later okay but the uh, uh, our discussion has centered on the longitudinal modes right and uh, this is where we discussed cavity modes and the fact that, um, you know, we drew a picture which looks like uh, this. We said that um, if this is the uh, frequency uh, axis and then we drew something for the gain profile, okay? Uh, so this we said is the gain profile delta nu g okay and the gain profile just says that you know we we introduced the gain profile which was um, uh, the gain profile and I, I just want to set my timer here because I want to keep an eye on how much I uh, talk when I make this video okay um, all right. So the gain profile was the uh, uh, frequency uh, bandwidth over which the gain medium is capable of providing um, lasing action okay and it can be you know we've drawn figures like this and then we said that uh, you can have a lot of cavity modes okay and so we drew a figure something which looks like looks like this that your longitudinal modes you see there are lots of them that are permitted okay and we just need to refine this picture a little more okay and so we said that, uh, you know, you can have these cavity modes and what was the, uh, the cavity spacing, mode spacing. So delta nu was the cavity mode and these are longitudinal modes, all right? Cavity mode spacing, right? And uh, so we discussed these kinds of modes. We drew figures like this. And then we talked about uh, we talked about a lot of our discussion centered on uh, making a laser single mode. And here again, when we talked about single mode, what we meant was single frequency mode. Okay, or uh, single longitudinal mode. Right, that's what we. Uh, we're discussing okay and so in this what we learned was that uh, well if you could um, decrease so one way we said is that if you um, 
decrease the cavity length L okay so that uh, if here's your ooh that's a asymmetric but it can be you know like uh, the gain profile can indeed look ugly like that but it's very wide is the main point and so if you decrease the cavity length um, so that the cavity mode spacing exceeds the gain profile or it's about equal or something so then you can have a situation where you have just one mode in and then the other mode is way out there okay so that's one way to make it single mode but then we uh, discussed that uh, you know and and we also said that uh, um, this method so decrease cavity length so that this and uh, uh, this method is indeed exploited for diode lasers and why why in diode lasers because um, because diode lasers you know you want them to be compact okay and uh, and compact also makes them rugged okay and inexpensive and so you know by making the cavity length l small you can have compact lasers and all uh, then we uh, we next said that uh, however of course you know if you wish to make a high power laser however for high power lasers okay uh, decreasing L not a good idea and so we had to come up with other methods remember so we came up with other other methods to make it single mode um, you know uh, and decreasing L is not a good idea because you want a lot of power you want a lot of gain okay um, so um, what you do then is that um, uh, and and the other thing, okay, so so you cannot use this method, obviously, but uh, what you then do is you use uh, um, uh, let's see, so you use use etalons instead. Remember those, okay? Uh, so so that's something we discussed. However, the other problem is that for high power lasers, you also, uh, you know, um, the condition for high power, uh, high power uh, brings other uh, problems, okay? And what are those problems? Well, uh, one problem, for example, is, um, so I'm, I'm actually going to use etalons instead. Okay, and high power brings other problems. What was one problem? One problem was uh, spectral hole burning. Okay, uh, spectral hole burning in uh, standing wave cavities so that was a problem and what did we do uh, to avoid spectral hole burning well we used ring lasers instead okay so we avoided that uh, problem by using a ring laser getting away from standing waves because remember spectral hole burning is formed by uh, the formation of standing waves the nodes and anti nodes right 
and uh, wherever the nodes occur, the gain medium is not being used at all. And wherever the anti-nodes are, that's where the uh, electric, uh, the electromagnetic wave inside has its maximum amplitude, and only those atoms are being pumped a lot. So there's uneven pumping of the gain medium, and that's the problem that you have in spectral hole burning. And we avoided that by using ring lasers. Um, uh, the other problem that we discussed was um, that of thermal lensing. That was the last topic that we did. And this we avoided by use birefringent gain medium. Okay, so those are the things we've discussed so far. Now, um, in the lab and uh, commonly, widely, uh, people actually use diode lasers a lot. So we are actually going to uh, center our discussion on diode lasers. And the interesting thing about diode lasers is that, yeah, we, we use this method that I have just described above, right? Um, and um, so now we're going to look at this a little uh, more in depth, okay? Because I've, uh, it's one thing to draw figures like this, but I've hidden uh, something from you uh, in here, okay? Uh, meaning that, you know, I've drawn these wide lines for the gain bandwidth delta nu g, okay? So actually gain profile bandwidth, that's what it's called. So let me write it. Or gain bandwidth, gain profile, gain bandwidth, gain profile bandwidth. These are all names used for. So anyway, I drew these broad features, you know, broad lines for, line shapes for the gain bandwidth. And then these very narrow lines for the cavity modes. But really, I mean, what are the scales here, you know? Like, I mean, this is not really a delta function, all right? So the thing that I want to discuss with you now is that um, in a diode laser, um, uh, if I use this method, so my L is tiny, right? L, the, the length of the cavity will tend to be just a few microns or so. So indeed exploited, let, let's discuss diode lasers here. So, uh, yeah, the L is on the order of few microns, okay? And so, yes, you've made it uh, only be one of these modes is, is lasing, but here's what we haven't discussed so far. What is the width of this line, okay? So, I mean, the line has some width, right? So, in reality, so uh, let me, s now I'm making a fresh point here that uh, the single mode allowed has some line width. We never discussed that. Okay, so this guy, and again, it's the scales, right? I mean, I don't know how wide this black curve is compared to this green line, but this green line has a certain width. Okay, and so, so this is your laser line width. So maybe we should call it delta nu L. Okay, has some line width. Uh, this is the, this is the laser line width. Delta nu L. Okay, and what is that? Because the question that comes up is that uh, is delta nu L narrow enough? So yeah, you've made it single mode, but is that line width of that single mode, is it narrow enough? And what does that question mean? Well, narrow enough depends on, you know, the answer depends on the experiment that you wish to do.
Okay. Now, uh, the experiment that we wish to do is, of course, you know, what we want to do is um, measure the, uh, our goal is measure the hyperfine structure, you know, the, the uh, spin of the nucleus hyperfine atomic structure right and think about what you're trying to do you're trying to actually show that the nucleus has spin okay uh, and so for this goal what kind of laser is required and it turns out that clearly the commercial laser that you've been using for your measurement so far is absolutely no good. It's single mode, but it's no good. The line width needs to be narrowed far, far more than what it is at. Okay? So now we have to talk about line width narrowing. And uh, so that will be the next topic. Uh, and I will discuss that in, a, in a, another video. Okay? And that should prepare you for the... Um, experiment that we're trying to do in the lab all right so um, so the next video will focus on um, this question all right I will um, end this one here all right